good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Jeffrey Bear. Try that again. All right, let's go a second time. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chief Drew. I'm Lieutenant Jeffrey Barefoot, and I welcome you to the Newport News Police Department 21st Basic Law Enforcement Academy graduation. Welcome distinguished visitors, recruit family members, friends, police personnel, and recruiting staff. I would also like to introduce those seated on the stage. Chief of Police Stephen Drew. Our guest speaker, Mr. Harvey Powers, the Honorable Judge Matthew Hoffman, Assistant City Manager Alan Archer, Assistant Chief Michael Hudgens, Assistant Chief Eric Randall, and Assistant Chief Michael Grinstead. I would also like to recognize the crowd Councilwoman Dr. Sandra Cherry. <laughs> Councilman David Jenkins. <laughs> Councilwoman Dr. Pat Woodbury. <laughs> Assistant City Manager Bo Clayton. The Honorable Judge Bryant Sugg. <laughs> Retired Chief of Police William Carvello. <laughs> Lieutenant Covey of the Portsmouth Police Department. <laughs> and Major Rob Coleman, the President of the Newport News Police Foundation. Oh, I have one on. Tom Saladino of the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office in New York also. <laughs> police Chaplain Walter Satchel, please come forward for the invocation. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for those assembled here this afternoon as we celebrate their advancement and graduation from the Basic Law Enforcement Academy. And ask that you bless them and keep them and that you will, <clears throat> will be with them and accomplish, accomplish in their lives. We thank you for the weeks the class has been together, for the good times and the fellowships and the friendships and we thank you for the instructors and teachers they have given their time and talents. We thank you for their commitment and dedication to our great city and its citizens. It is in the name above all names we pray. Amen. Please stand for the presentation of colors by the Newport News Color Guard and then the national anthem which will be performed by Michael Keel, Christy Miller, Morgan Gross, Brittany Steele, and Alec Wolf of the Minchville High School Quartet Orchestra. Honor Guard! Hoo! Hey! 
Doctor Who. You can please be seated. I would say I'd like to thank you, the Menchville Orchestra Quartet. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure now to introduce Mr. Elijah Brown, who is a senior at Heritage High School and a member of the Young Adult Police Commissioners. Please come up, Elijah. Good evening. My name is Elijah Brown, and I am a senior at Heritage High School. I am also the president of the Young Adult Police Commissioners. I am thrilled to be given the opportunity to speak in front of all of you today. Today, we congratulate the men and women who have successfully made it through the Newport News Police Academy. Soon, you all will walk out of here and be our city's new police officers. But before you take this next step, I want you to ask yourself, what kind of officer am I going to be? Once you're given your badge, you are in charge of protecting the lives of thousands of people. Every day, there will be a new challenge thrown your way, whether it's rolling out of bed, getting to work on time, or more serious issues, such as being called in at three o'clock in the morning because of a shooting or the guy you just pulled over is having a bad day and he's aggressive with you and you have to handle a very scary situation in seconds. What kind of officer will you be? As the president and proud member of the Young Adult Police Commissioners, I have worked with many officers who have gone through the same training. The same question I'm having you ask yourself is the same question these officers ask themselves every day. These officers are honest, trustworthy, loving, responsible, and full of integrity. These officers have passed on knowledge and wisdom to teenagers like me and many people of the community. These officers have given homes and provided families to those in need. They have also given their own money out of their own pockets to help provide the needs of others. These are things they did while wearing their badge, but not because of their badge. In the career you're entering, there are three key factors to help you do your job. Those factors are knowledge, skills, and attitude. Your knowledge was given to you through your training. Your skills will improve while on the job, but your attitude, yes, your attitude, you control. Your attitude will determine how you handle a situation, whether it's easy or difficult. I once told a friend that greatness is not the outcome of a situation, but it's the attitude you have while being presented with it and overcoming that situation. Choose like Newport News police officers to be great. I congratulate you all on your success. I believe that Chief Drew has hand selected a great group of police officers. Therefore, I trust you all will help lead this department in the right direction. Thank you for allowing me to share these words with you. I hope you all have a great rest of the evening and a long, safe, and honorable career. Thank you, Elijah. Now, Chief Drew will introduce our guest speaker. Well, good afternoon. It's a great looking crowd, a great facility today to 
be here at First Baptist Church. I want to make sure that we say thank you to the pastor, Mr. Satchel, and the, the individuals who attend here, the members at First Baptist Church, to, to allow us to use this sanctuary. It's completely beautiful. I, I was talking to my new friend with her pretty bow, and she said it is completely beautiful in here, and that made my whole day. You did great. But I do want us to lighten up a little bit, breathe a little bit. This is a good, this is a great occasion. I feel a little odd. I apologize for facing this way. But we're here all for you. But I want us to have a good time in here. They've earned it. They have worked hard, they've earned it. All right? Now, it's my pleasure to introduce the guest speaker today. I will refer to him sometimes as Captain Powers as I talk about him a little bit because we spent 25 years together in the Richmond Police Department. We started the very same day. I didn't like Harvey much in the academy. <laughs> he was like one of the fastest runners and I was one of the slowest. He always set the pace. I didn't like that. But we grew to have a great friendship. Um, I enjoyed working with him and when I asked him uh, about coming down and being our guest speaker. I knew he, he'll probably tell you, he had to fly in from out of town because he travels all over the country now. He's big and famous. Um, but it is my pleasure to introduce him. And before I do, uh, I got, I've known his daughter for just about the same amount of time. I remember when he told me he was having a little girl. Oh boy. She actually got to sit beside me when he was promoted to the rank of sergeant. Now, she was preparing to attend VCU when she graduates high school this year. She came down a couple months ago and she toured CNU. Mr. Archer, she fell in love with CNU. And I believe two or three days ago, if I'm not correct, she received a letter that said she's been accepted to CNU and changed her mind. So she's going to be here. She's going to be here. So if you're looking for any Christmas gifts, maybe a t shirt that says, Proud Parent of a CNU student <laughs> might be outstanding. But let me, let me introduce you to my friend, my good friend, Harvey Powers. Captain Powers is a 25-year veteran of the Richmond Police Department. He served there until he retired in May of 2018. For the last five years of his career, Har Captain Powers, Harvey, was the director of the Richmond Police Training Academy. He set the tone and really raised the bar of what we do in the training academy there, and I've stole some of the things he implemented from Richmond to here. One being pulling the recruits, this great group behind me, out of the classroom setting for a week and letting them work in the community. Letting them meet individuals who are suffering from mental illness, homeless, working in churches, individuals who have problems with addiction, but sometimes breaking that mold of just having new things set down into them that they're out in the community. That was his idea. Now, I'll only give him credit for it one time and never again, but I did it. I did the right thing. In addition to his role at the, the police department in the, uh, in the academy, he, he served eight years as a regional leader and fundraiser for the law enforcement uh, torch run to benefit Special Olympics. I know that's something that's very near and dear to him, and he did a phenomenal job. Captain Powers holds undergraduate degrees from James Madison University in psychology. He's also a graduate of PERF, which is a senior management institute for police and, and law enforcement. It's a three and a half, three week school that's held in Boston. Most of the leadership in the Newport News Police Department have been to that school and are currently going. He serves on the Chesterfield County Community Service Board, overseeing community mental health and substance abuse services since 2013, where he serves as the board chair. Now he is currently employed by Fair and Partial Policing LLC and teaches community policing and implicit bias all over the country. So where I'm going to deviate a little bit is when he retired, when he came and talked to me that he was leaving the, the Newport News Police Department, Harvey had got in while he was in the academy, he met some people about training, and training in law enforcement always changes. So we started traveling around, doing some different training, talking about community police and implicit bias and how to address that. So he gets hired 
and he's traveling all over, and he said, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be stationed in this city for three years, I'm gonna train their entire police department. It's gonna take me three years to do it. Three years, must be a long course. So he's been training the entire, you might have heard of them, right? The New York City Police Department, he has trained that whole department, and it took him three years to get through the whole department there to train them on community policing and implicit bias. I think he just flew in from Cincinnati. I know it's a little cold up there, but he has been all over. He may tell you a couple of the places, but Boston, New York, I think we've got some people here from New York today. Um, Michigan, no, don't clap, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was just paying respect. <laughs> but he, uh, he, he, is, uh, I, he is a wealth of knowledge and he understands the challenges in police work. What communities expect, challenges for law enforcement, technology that comes along with it, and he does a phenomenal job. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please help me recognizing my friend and bringing him here to talk, Captain Harvey Powers. Wow. I'm just glad I didn't have to follow you, Mr. Brown. Um, I'd rather follow him than you, let's just say that, all right? Um, I do, it is kind of weird. I feel like I'm gonna be talking to you guys most of the day. So, um, hey, good afternoon. I'm, I'm really, truly honored to be part of this. Um, I, um, I think it's interesting that, um, Chief, your speech is written. Mine's actually on what we call a tablet right now. No, this is kind of new technology. Um, <laughs> Maybe we can look into that for you. Uh, this man sat next to me in a police academy. Uh, for seven months in a police academy, the man never brought a pen to school a single day. He never had a piece of paper. And about three weeks in, we were going around the room and the, the instructor looked at us and said, what do you want to do with your career in law enforcement? And he had a lot of things said. The recruits in the room would say, oh, I want to be a SWAT team member. I want to be a detective. I'd like to make sergeant. Some said, I'd like to make lieutenant. They get to Steve here, and he says, oh, I think I'm going to be a police chief one day. <laughs> Way to call your shot. <laughs> um, before I, I just say a quick few words to the, the, uh, the new officers, I would like to make a request of all of you in the Newport News Police Department, including the newer officers. Um, as Steve alluded to, my daughter will be joining the incoming ranks of, office, of uh, college students at CNU next year. Her name is Brianna Powers. <laughs> I can provide social security numbers and dates of birth as needed. Um, I would like you to pay very close attention to her. <laughs> On her behalf, I would like to officially uh, waive her right to unlawful search and seizure. <laughs> and. Um, if you see her misbehaving in any way in public, please contact me. <laughs> Your swearing in today does not just uh, enable you to be a police officer, it also enables you to act in my behalf. Um, but of course, and I think it goes without saying, none of you are permitted to date her. So, um, <laughs> so let me start by asking a rhetorical question. Is there anybody in this room that actually remembers anything meaningful that was ever said by a guest speaker at a graduation? I, I was thinking about it last night. I, I think about high school graduation, college graduation, our academy graduation, promotions, all of the guest speakers I've had, and I can't remember anything any of them said. So either the bar is really high for me today or it's really low. Either way, I, I, I hope I do okay with it. Um, despite this, I'm going to try. I want to start with this firm belief that I have that stupid people never learn from their mistakes, smart people learn from their mistakes, and wise people learn from other people's mistakes. And I'd like to ask you to learn from a mistake that I made as a brand new cop in the city of Richmond. Um, as the chief said, I spent 25 years in the city of Richmond, and when we graduated the academy, the city of Richmond was the deadliest city in the United States per capita. We were a city of just under 190,000. We routinely had 170 homicides a year. It was a very violent place. It was depressing. I remember distinctly looking at my family and saying, they're gonna have to burn this city down and start all over again. There's just no way to save this. It was awful. 
And as I entered this job, I started to meet people. And I met a few bad ones, for sure. Um, in this profession, you meet a few bad ones. But I met so many good ones. So many people that had been trapped in awful circumstances and were a product of that circumstance, not of bad decision making. And I learned very quickly that the reality is that less than 10% of the population in the worst neighborhoods, less than 10% of the population are creating 95% of the problem. And we have to be very careful that we don't treat the other 90% like they're the ones that are committing the problem. So I want to leave you guys with two words. Hopefully you remember just two words out of my, my little stick today, okay? Positive contact. Positive contact. Positive contact. These are two words that nobody ever shared with me when I was a brand new police officer. We work in a profession of negative contact. Nobody ever picked up the phone and called 911 and said, I'm having a great day. Nothing's wrong. Can you send the cops by? I want to have a Coke with them on the front porch. If they made that phone call, we'd probably bring mental health with us when we go visit. We get to meet people that are in crisis. That's the job, okay? We get to meet people on the worst day of their life. And we get it like a dozen times every day for 25 years. And there is no wonder that cops end up seeing the world the way they do. That kind of repetitive chaos has a toll. Positive contact. These, are, these two words are very important. Um, cops find a place, any place, that you can get to meet people when they're not in crisis. Just a little bit of positive contact um, makes cops significantly better. There's, there's a lot of science behind this, and I'm not going to bore you with science because your eyes will roll to the back of your head and you're done. But there's a lot of science out here that talks about how important having positive contact with people is. Because once you have positive contact, it changes how you do business. You make better use of force decisions. You make better problem-solving decisions. Positive contact makes good cops. Now, I will freely acknowledge we don't have an extensive culture that uh, has encouraged positive contact, but things are changing. And I see some of the things that uh, Chief Drew is doing here in Newport News, that uh, other stuff that other police departments across the country are doing, certainly not with the level of energy you're bringing to it. Um, there's a, this culture is changing. Um, but, I, and honestly, most cops did not become cops for positive contact. We came to this profession to take bad people out of the room so good people can relax. But positive contact is critical. Personally, when I became a cop, I thought this job was gonna be a lot like what Ponch and John had told me it was gonna be like. I'm sorry, um, Ponch and John were in the TV show. <laughs> Eric Estrada, have you ever heard of Eric Estrada? All right, cool, never mind. <laughs> All right, next year, teach them who Eric Estrada is, okay? Um, positive contact can come anywhere from, with any group, but you don't just trip over it. You gotta look for it. You gotta find a place it requires effort and energy. You don't just end up with positive contact. Maybe once in a while, but not frequently. And I will tell you, knowing Chief Drew, the way I do, you will have plenty of opportunity for positive contact. And one last thing about positive contact, it becomes a two-way street. We live in a world where some loud voices are telling our communities that we're the bad guys. And in case you ain't heard it recently, we are not the bad guys. When you have positive contact with a group of people who thinks they know the police, 
you change their opinion of us as well. Positive contact doesn't just make better cops, it makes them understand us a little better too. It is a win across the board. So, new officers, I need you to be capable of two things simultaneously. I need you to be good cops. And I am firmly believing that Chief Drew and his team here with Newport News, they've got you knowing how to do that. And I need you to be able to engage the community and have that positive contact. And if you can do both of those, you become the full package. Not just one or the other. You gotta have both. Now please be safe. This, this group behind me is like a coiled spring. They're ready to go. Um, please work hard. Please be that good cop you know you're going to be. And because of that positive contact, you're going to be that better cop. It will make your job easier, and it is the key value of this profession. And as parents and family and loved ones of these young people behind me, I will say only one thing. It's your fault they're here. <laughs> My parents saw me cross the stage a long time ago, and they were very worried about me and uh, they didn't know what I was getting into. And the city of Richmond was difficult then. And I will never forget looking at them and saying, it's your fault I'm here. You taught me there's right and wrong in the world and that somebody has to stand up for right. It's your fault they're here. Thank you for being part of this and thank you for the invitation to be part of this. Good luck to the new officers. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Recruit Vasquez, who was nominated by his peers, will now bring greetings from the class. Good afternoon. Distinguished guests, members of the Newport News Police Department, and families and friends of the graduating class. A special welcome to the Newport News Police Academy BLE Class 21. It took a lot for us to get here, but we made it. For the past 22 weeks, 34 recruits embarked on a journey in which we were tested, both personally and as a team. To say we had our ups and downs during this period is an understatement. Being the largest class in the history of the Newport News Police Academy presented some challenges. For example, during shield training with members of the Tactical Operations Unit, our chances of making mistakes increased, thereby inspiring them and having us do some motivational PT at the end of the day, a day none of us would forget. Or the 26 infractions, which recently happened during patrol techniques which resulted in 350, 351 squat presses with 10 pound weight. Yeah, we just did that this past Tuesday, by the way. Still a little sore. A large group can also be more cumbersome in size, which is why we were at times broken down into two groups during certain weeks. However, this was a good thing. During the periods when we were broken up into two groups, I noticed how the class bonded together and not just within the two groups, but as a whole. By sharing information in regards to what to expect and prepare for during certain weeks of the training, it demonstrated a sense of unity and a spirit de corps. Yes, a large class always has the potential of tallying up more infractions, as our lovely inf instructors can testify to. But it was also an opportunity for us as a class to be more meticulous in what we did and, no pun intended, police ourselves. As it says in the Oath of Honor, to always have the courage to hold ourselves and others accountable for our actions. This reinforced a commitment in each of us in always striving, striving to do what is right. I believe this will serve us well as we begin our careers. 
And although we had our ups and downs and moments of frustrations and disagreements as a class, as any class would, we were able to persevere and remain stronger together. As our class motto goes, strive as one, leave behind none. Officer Prater came up with that one. There are many individuals who helped us get to where we are today, such as the recruiting staff of Captain Bradley, Lieutenant Dunbar, Lieutenant Funyak, Sergeant Ramdahal, Investigators Williams, Moore, Mercer, Minkoff, Gutierrez, and Gaddis. Where's Gaddis? Without their dedication and support, none of us would be here today. The amount of man hours spent in assisting an applicant from becoming a prospect to a recruit oftentimes goes without, no, without notice or a mention of praise. And so we say thank you for what you do. To our BLE coordinator, MPO O'Berry, also known as Dad. <laughs> you remind me of the famous boxing coach, Joe Cortez, who would always sit to the boxers before the beginning of a match, remember guys, I am fair but firm. You are a no-nonsense authority figure who would push us to our limits, never accept any kind of excuses, but would always be there for us if ever we needed help. You taught us that even a flawed individual can still inspire greatness. After all, not all of us want to be cowboys or dress like cowboys, or worse yet, be fan of the Dallas Cowboys. We thank you, sir, for your leadership and your patience during this period with us. Officer Riley, you poured into us the value of hard work and dedication. Whether it was during classroom instructions or the humbling defensive training sessions we had with you each week. Now, you don't mess with Officer Riley. That's Laura Croft. That's the real Tomb Raider. <laughs> the passion you demonstrated in preparing us to become police officers was always readily apparent. You have a remarkable combination of strength and grace. And as Officer Reyes pointed out, we were scared of you when we first met you. We are still scared of you now. And 25 years later when we retire, we're still gonna be scared of you. Thank you for always being there for us. Officer Wozak, you are a modern day Spartan. There was always a sense of dread when under his instructions. You felt that you would be kicked into the black hole like in the movie 300 for any mistakes you made. His goal was to instill in us the warrior mindset of never giving up and never, never letting anyone down, whether it's another officer or a civilian in need. Thank you for your dedication and instruction. MPO Call, you are a great addition to the training staff, an instructor filled with knowledge and experience. The academy is in good hands having you as an instructor. You kind of remind me of Gomer Pyle, though, but that's okay. Sorry. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Sinclair, during your time as a BLE supervisor, I could tell you were an academic of sorts when you had us write a 500-word essay on why we wanted to become police officers. That was a nice touch, by the way. It kind of reminded me of my old college days. Sergeant Bartley, who has taken your place, has already demonstrated a great commitment in helping us finishing the course. To the both of you, I say thank you, as many of us do not know what goes on behind the scenes in keeping the Academy afloat. Captain Petrosky, as a cabinet director, I can only imagine the challenges you were required to contend with. Thank you for watching over us and guiding the Academy during this period. Lieutenant Barefoot, congratulations, sir, on becoming the new Academy Director. In my opinion, you have the finest instructors throughout the entire Commonwealth of Virginia. There's other members of the instructor staff I would like to thank, such as Sergeant Carter, whose recent promotion is a testament to his leadership. Oh. Almost there, folks. Sergeant Carter was also willing to take the bumps and bruises that goes along with being a puncher back for Officer Raleigh during training sessions. <laughs> uh, Sergeant Churchill, whose command presence ensured that all of us knew the oath of honor on command. MPO Poe and MPO Hudson, 
both who were instrumental in anything that had to do with the gun range or with driving uh, during the driving week. There's so many words of expressions of gratitude that I can say about all of the instructors, those mentioned and those not mentioned. But simply put, thank you all for the sacrifices you made in order for us to become good and competent police officers. Chief Drew, thank you, sir, for allowing us to be part of the Newport News Police Department family. You took a chance by hiring us and allowing us to be recruits as we enter into the academy. And I just want to say thank you for that. May we gain in both wisdom and knowledge as we begin our careers under your leadership and under the leadership of those appointed over us. Finally, to our family and friends, all 34 of us here have a personal story to tell. We all have people that we love and honor, whether it's for me, my father and grandfather before him, both all of us who's proudly served in the United States military, or Officer Dudash and his father, who's a proud retired member of the Newport News Fire Department. These are just two examples of the entire class. But to our family, to our parents, our spouses, our children, our friends, thank you for your support, for your sacrifices, for your commitment, your patience, and love as we endure these past 22 weeks in order to fulfill our dreams and serving others as police officers. Thank you for being here on this special day, and God bless. Thank you, Recruit Vasquez. I just told him in his ear that I knew his brother for these couple years now, and I didn't even realize the connection, so that was kind of funny. Okay. The BLE coordinators, Master Police Officer Wilbert O'Berry and Officer Catherine Riley will present the James D. Fox Award. I'd like to take a moment to summarize the James D. Fox Award of Excellence and introduce the award recipient. James Fox began his career in law enforcement while he was attending college. He was a dispatcher, police officer, and sergeant for the Virginia Commonwealth University Police Department. He was hired by the Henrico County Police Department in 1973, where he rose through the ranks and was promoted to the rank of Assistant Chief in 1991. He retired from the Henrico <laughs> Uh, Police Department in February of 2004. Chief Fox began his tenure with the Newport News Police Department on August 1st, 2004. As Chief of Police, he worked tirelessly to reduce crime and build the city of Newport News into a vibrant, growing community. He retired from our department and law enforcement on September 1, 2013. Throughout his career, Chief Fox had a passion for leadership and excellence in all aspects of policing. He had a vision to provide the best possible training to Newport News recruits and felt being an independent academy was a critical step to accomplishing this. Through his tireless leadership and vision, the Newport News Training Academy became an independent academy in 2009 and today we graduate our 21st class. We appreciate his leadership and dedication to the safety of our community and his tireless efforts into making the Newport News Police Department one of excellence. Our status as an independent and nationally accredited training academy is one of his many legacies he has given us. The James D. Fox Award for Excellence is, the appropriately, is appropriately presented to a graduate of the Newport News Police Department's Basic Law Enforcement Training Academy who displays academic performance, teamwork, leadership, passion, character, and commitment. The Academy training staff selects the award recipient based on the recruit's overall performance in these areas during the entire 22-week-long Academy session. It is our privilege to announce the recipient of the James D. Fox Award of Excellence to Michael Alombro.
I'll have Chief Drew with some remarks. All right. We're getting ready to get to the best part. The only thing that stands between those young men and women getting their badges pinned on, I bet they practice that all night. I just got a few things to say. I've got a few thank yous I want to say, a few acknowledgments to the department, and then a few words of charge for these men and women. So first let me say again, thank you for this, uh, the ability to hold our ceremony here. This is a phenomenal church. They do a great work in the community, and it's just, as my friend, it is beautiful. There's a couple of people I want to single out in the crowd. I want to thank uh, Rob for all your support, the relationship that we have with the Sheriff's Department. You're always a big supporter. Um, City Council, Dr. Cherry, Dr. Woodbury, Councilman Jenkins, you all are at just about every event we have. And I think we're blessed to have a city where we have such a great relationship with our City Councilman, our City Leaders, our Mayor, our City Manager, Cindy Roth. I want to thank Assistant City Manager Alan Archer, Assistant City Manager Bo Clayton for being here. I think it's important for these young men and women to see you. If they happen to make you on a traffic stop, you can remind them who you are, and it'll all be okay. <laughs> Community's a big, big part. Um, Harvey talked a lot about it, and uh, there's no bigger partner than we have in the community than uh, the Boys and Girls Club. So Angel, I want to thank you. She's executive director of the Boys and Girls Club here in Newport News. She does a phenomenal job. Uh, we do a tremendous amount of work. So thank you for allowing us to work with the kids of this city and your facilities and your staff. I really appreciate that. I want to thank the other members of law enforcement that are here from other jurisdictions. I want to thank, they're just kind of sitting in the back, they try to keep quiet, but all the background investigators and the recruiters, you guys, I get assigned the dotted line, but you guys put the time and the effort in to find the very best individuals to bring into this city. And that matters, and it's important. And I don't know if you get enough credit, I know you don't from me, so I wanted to take this moment, just personal moment and say thank you, I appreciate the work that you did. The academy staff, O'Berry, I think, I was talking to him last night, I think this is about his 11th class. How many, O'Berry, how many recruits have you put through the academy? 220. 220, the department's 450. 220 is responsible for getting through the academy. He does a phenomenal job. I want to thank the Academy of Staff for the work that they do. You guys are investing time and effort to make sure that these are the very best trained officers before we release them to the community and work with our field training officers. We changed our field training program a little bit this year, and I even see some of the officers here on my, my right um, that came here today. Guys, I, I appreciate that, and it doesn't go unnoticed. I appreciate what you do. When they get their badges today and they get released to you, I want you to take care of these individuals and teach them the right way to be police officers in this community. I told you field training officers last night, you all were hand selected for a reason. Because the assistant chiefs and myself have faith in you. And I charge you to take care of these men and women, protect them, and teach them the right way to serve the citizens of Newport News. Of Newport News. They deserve it. Chief Corvello, thank you for being here today. We had a good conversation in my office just a week ago. You're a legend in this city, and you're a mentor to me, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here today, and it means a lot. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the young people. Elijah, that was a great speech. Um, the young adult police commissioners that we partner with. The, now, I'm not sure, but I think if it's five, it's a quintet, not a quartet, right? <laughs> But it's all right, I'm going to work with Lieutenant, it's, it's going to be, we'll get it. But they, phenomenal, talented, talented young people from Mitchville High School. Uh, look, growing up and being a teenager today is hard. A lot more challenges than what we had, believe you me. With social media and the things that linger out there, I appreciate the youth of this city. I have faith in them, and we're going to make a big investment in the youth of this city. And I want, to, I, want, I want young people growing up in Newport News to know that this police department, this chief, this command staff, the young people, you matter to me. You matter to us. You're our future. The last group I want to say thank you to before I talk to these recruits, I guess there's two groups. One is Karen Witherspoon and Lindsay. I drive these two crazy. They are head of our, they, Lindsay works with us in the police department, our HR division. And Ms. Witherspoon oversees it to make sure we don't do anything wrong. And I'm on the phone with them just about every other day. 
I'm ready to hire another one. Hey, I got a great recruit. I don't want to live. Well, we've got to do this. We've got to do that. Well, how about this? How about that? Chief, we can't do that. They are phenomenal. And I know I drive you guys crazy. But I appreciate the investment. And, and there's been a lot of thanks here. But none of these, none of you all would be here without the HR department that we have in the Newport News Police Department in the city of Newport News. And I just wanted to be personal and say both of you, thank you very much for the investment you make in these men and women in our department in this community. Thank you very much. And I'll tell you, I got the best view in the house. This place is packed. I want to thank the men and women, the families, your loved ones. It's been a long road to going through the process, five or six months in the academy, we're going to get badges pinned on them today, and then they're going to do a couple more months in field training. They are special people. This is a special, this is a special field. It's like Harvey said, that we never know what kind of call we're going to receive. We never know what's going to be the next minute. We don't know what type of situation we're going into. We try to write a policy for everything. The training that they go through, the effort that they put into this academy, the support that they get from you is phenomenal. They could not have done it without you. I promise you that. They will need you as they go through field training. Now most of them will call you every time they make a traffic stop when they come home to tell you about it. I know I did. Dad, guess what happened? I'm watching the Reds game. Call me later. <laughs> but they will love this job. I got to meet each one of your family members, each one of your loved ones that sit behind me. And again, guys, gals, I apologize for talking, but because there are so many, I don't get to face you. So I saw them in the hallway. We did an inspection before, and a couple of them tried not to smile. So I hope behind me that they're smiling, as I'm sure the academy staff told them not to, right? So if you catch them with a smile back there, because I can't see them, would somebody please take a picture? They're going to have the ability to impact lives in this great city. Police work is not the same it was 25 years ago. When we started, or some of us that started 30 or 40 years ago, so he ain't going to smile either. Look, Chief Grinstead has been here almost 38 years, <laughs> right? He's seen, he's seen law enforcement evolve and evolve and evolve. <laughs> he has a wealth of knowledge, and uh, he, he gave some comments last night, and I thought it was very touching. He, he talked about, talk about the, all of us, how we feel about this department, this city. He lives here. He grew up here. His family's here. His father was a, a fire, fire, firefighter here. He does a great service, and he has a wealth to have. But every chance I get to tease him, and Mr. Bradley, they've been here the longest. I'm going to jab them a little bit. It's good to have fun. If Cindy Rolfe was here, she would tell you it's important to laugh and have fun. So I got to meet some of the recruits. They came in before they start the academy. I sit in my office. We talk back and forth. And I asked them, why do you want to do, join this job? And I'll tell you, I remember when I started, you got the cool uniforms, that adrenaline. I want to go out there. I want to arrest bad guys. I want to save the world. And you know what they said to me? And I'm always amazed. We want to impact the youth of this city. We want to change things. I want to make be things better for my neighborhood. I grew up in this city. I went to school in this city. I care about people. I want to invest in youth. My brother and I struggled growing up. I want to make something better for other people. That's what I'm looking for. In the academy, they teach you to be proficient with our firearm. They teach you how to drive in pursuits, score the best on a test, but you know what I'm looking for in this department? We can teach you all those things. What I'm looking for are men and women who care, who care about the community, who care about the citizens, the people that live here in Newport News, that work here, that raise their families. I have told them, I have said it before, and I'm going to say it here. You will not remember the number of arrests or traffic citations you make.
or right. But I promise you, every one of these members up here on this stage, the men and women in uniform, you will remember lives you impact. You will, you will remember the people that you come in contact with and are able to help at hard times of their life. Whether it's a traffic accident, something happened to a family member, a domestic violence situation, someone who's homeless, someone who needs a second chance, we all do. That matters. Captain Tejans would tell me, the stuff we do, Chief, it matters. We are blessed in this city. I am blessed to work here, to work around such great people, and to have this class behind me. So here's a history. This is the biggest class in the history of the city of the Newport News Police Department. When we started, we did not have enough uniforms to outfit them. We had to order extra we had to order extra badges. We even had to take them out of the academy because they were too big. We moved them to police headquarters. We had to split the class at times and do different training. That caused us some obstacles. But that's okay. Because now, the Newport News Police Department for the first time in the 80s is going to be fully staffed in patrol. And I've got three precinct captains down here on this front row that are saying it's about time. They are ready for these guys to graduate and get to work. So to the recruits, I got to meet a little intimate with you and your family last night, your family members. And that was special to me, especially the young nieces and nephews, sons and daughters. That's pretty cool for the recruit to stand up and hear, here's who I'm here with. But I want to tell you now that you're part of our family. Family members and each one of these individuals behind me, you're part of a bigger family now. The city of Newport News, the Newport News Police Department, you all matter to me. The recruits that chose this department, there's some other departments here, here with us. The Peninsula, right? Hampton Roads area. Everyone is looking for law enforcement today. We used to have thousands of people apply. Two and three hundred show up. It's not like that anymore. Everybody's competing for quality, for talent. There's no mistake that they're here. They earned it. They are the best of the best. As Lindsay screened them out, Miss Witherspoon signed off on them. As the academy goes through and trains them to be the best, what I'm looking for as we move this department forward, they are the best of the best. They did receive the best training on the East Coast, I assure you that. And I'm proud of them. I would go down and see them just about once a week. Now, they didn't always see me. I would hide in the back of the room and look through the glass. I got to see the 78 screen PowerPoints that they were going through. And oh my gosh. But the training gets more and more intensive each year. There's more and more required of law enforcement officers each year. I don't train officers how to help someone who's homeless. I don't train officers in the academy what to do with someone who has an addiction problem. I certainly don't spend any time training an officer how to go to a, a, a house where a mother or father can't get their 14-year-old to get up and go to school. But we get called to do that all the time. So where do they get that from? Who teaches them that? Who teaches them how to talk to people and interact with citizens? How to treat people with empathy and understanding? How to deal with people when they go through hard times and struggles and they see those challenging times of life? Who taught them that? You all did. The things that you embedded to them as they grew up. From the conversations that I had with them, they all talk about family members, loved ones, significant others. That's what I'm looking for. I have not figured out how to teach that in an academy class yet. But I know when I bring people into this department, Lindsay, that's what we're looking for. Petrosky, that's what we're looking for. You did a great job with this class. You deserve that promotion. I'm proud of you. Lieutenant Barefoot, you're taking over a huge responsibility, training the best officers for the citizens of this city. They deserve it. I want to thank Mr. Archer, Mr. Clayton, City Council, Mayor Price, 
Cindy Roth, for giving us the ability to be fully staffed. I know that is not easy, but I also know that the safety of this city matters. What we do with youth in this community matters. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to turn my back to you for a second. I apologize. I am proud of each and every one of you. Each and one of you deserve to be here today. You worked hard. You have a lot of expectations. It will only get harder. But remember this. We are only allowed to do in this city what the 180,000 citizens allow us to do. We are there to help them, protect them, and keep them safe. It doesn't matter where they live. It doesn't matter their race, gender, their belief. It is our job to keep them safe, defend those who can't, and stand up for others. There has been a lot of training that each of you have received, and with that comes high requirement, high accountability. I believe wholeheartedly that you are the best class to come forward and ready to do this job. I'm proud of each and every one of you. You all respect it here, and you're valued in this department. Please, don't do anything to tarnish this badge, this department, and please serve, serve the citizens of this city the same way you would want each of them to take care of one of your family members. Is that fair? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sit down now. The best part is getting ready to happen is when you get to pin the badge on your loved ones. But I'm telling you what, I'm excited because it took me a long time to get this many officers in this class. I want to see some smiles in here. I want to see some hand clapping over here. Things are about to change in this city and our staffing. I appreciate you all being here today. We're going to move forward with the program, but I'll tell you what, I am excited for these men and women behind me. I'm more excited for what's getting ready to happen in this city when they graduate. Thank you all for joining us today. The Honorable Judge Matthew Hoffman will now swear in the graduates. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, recruits. Good afternoon, sir. This is always a very special moment for me, and much like in my courtroom, you don't get to do anything until I say that you get to do something. So I'm just going to say a few brief words. Um, I was a prosecutor uh, in this city for 10 years uh, before taking the bench, and an attorney for 20. And uh, the group of brass up here, and the gentleman in the front row and in training, are all officers that I prosecuted cases with. And I'm so proud of them and the job that they do for the city that I live in and feel safe and protected in no matter what. And so this is a very special uh, day for me. And so for you, ladies and gentlemen, and your new recruits who will all be coming uh, in front of me at some point to try cases, uh, there are two things that I want to uh, ask of each of you while you do your job out there and when you come before me. I'm a child of the 70s, and so I'm going to steal the first one from Mr. Rogers. All right. Mr. Rogers says that every time you interact and come into touch with someone, treat them as if they are the most important person in the world right then. And I want you to keep that in mind when you come into contact with the citizens of this city and the people that you deal with, that at that moment, they are the most important person to you in this world. And the second thing I want you to do is leave every encounter that you come into contact with, every person that you come into contact with, with hope. Show them that there is hope for them, no matter what the situation is that they're in. And remember, you're coming into touch with people who are facing the worst possible things that have happened to them and probably will happen to them in their lives. You be that ray of light, you be that hope for them, so that when I get to see them, I can share that hope with them as well. You prepared for your oath? I have to look at you when I do this. All right, repeat after me. Raise your right hands, please. I and your name. I and your do solemnly swear or affirm, do solemnly swear or affirm that, I will the of the that I will support the Constitution of the United States, 
that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia and that I will faithfully and impartially and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me incumbent upon me as a probationary police officer as a probationary police officer for the city of Newport News for the city of Newport News according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god congratulations now move into the badge and certificate presentations. Uh, recruits, as I call your name, come up, join Chief Drew and your family on stage. Bobby Allen. Michael Alombro. Antoine Anderson. Ken Andrus.
first try. Scott Atwell. on your new badges. Anybody know how to, anybody got any songs? Look at that. Save the day. Rosa Beasley. Alicia Burwell. Abiezer Colon.
<laughs> Matt Conti. Latanya Covington. Gina, is that you back there? Come on up here. You hear us fine. James Dudash. Malik Faulkner.
Corey Fredenberg. Evander Garcia. Robert Herget. Tomorrow we look at all these videos and laugh, just so you know. <laughs> we on the second row yet? We are, we just we're, started. We're halfway to We're getting the best. Brandon Holden. I got to meet the family last night. That's me by having a question. <laughs> Is that your brother? Yes, sir. You in the fire department? Yes, sir. 
Sorry. <laughs> Anthony Jones, Jr. Rodney Jones. Dylan Lyons. Donald Maget.
Christopher Mazuka. James McCauley. Christopher Melmer. Christopher Muick.
Instructor, what week in the class do they run this? Oh, his, uh, his fault. I, I think we need to add another week to the academy class. <laughs> Jolene O'Brien. Christian Prater. I think we're going this way. Jesse Renault.
had something like that happen before. No, sir. That's a first, huh? Wilfredo Reyes, Jr. Victoria Ross. Brian Simmons.
Jamal Smith. Sola. Sonia Tucker. I've seen the Navy and the Air Force try to pin badges on the day, and I'll tell you, I'm a little concerned. <laughs> It is the last one. Luis Vasquez. Assistant Chief Randa will now administer the oath of honor.
Would all law enforcement that is present today please stand and join me in the oath of honor. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. On my honor, On my honor. I will never betray my badge, I will never betray my, badge. My, integrity. my integrity, my character, my character. Or, the public trust. or the public trust. I will always have the courage, will have the courage. To, hold to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. For our actions. I will always uphold the Constitution. And the, I serve. and the community I serve. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. We just celebrated all the recruits. Um, I also want to take a moment to thank the training staff. You may all stand up, please. <laughs> Wonderful job under the curtilage of Captain Petrosky. Also, all everybody in recruiting, please stand up. Captain Bradley, please stand up. Thank you so much. Outstanding. Cap Chaplain Satchel, will you please come forward to deliver the benediction, please? What a wonderful afternoon. How about one more time we give my guy's hand? <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray and ask that you watch over each of our graduate police officers and protect them with your love. Please guide and direct them as they keep us safe both day and night. Hold them firmly in your care should danger come their way. Give them true strength and courage as they serve until duty ends. We also ask protection for their family and friends. May the strength of God pilot us May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the word of God direct us. In his holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming this afternoon in support of our new officers. And I invite you to a reception in the Fellowship Hall to your left. Please stand for the recession.